like you hurt me too. What's going on, Reef Builders? I'm Jake Adams, and because I'm wearing my Aquarium Design Group shirt, that must mean it is a day for coral aquascaping. So, um, as you've seen, we've done a lot of work here on this particular bommy. We still have the stump of the Milka Stylo, but I am going to be uh, doing a lot of work here on this particular bommy and on the other side. Basically, just trying to replace some of the really fast growing corals with some more like normal fast growing corals. Um, I do want to show you our experiments in coral grafting uh, from the previous time we had our hands in here. Um, in this tank right here you can see that the uh, Joe Dirt has fused pretty well to itself and uh, over here the Worldwide Corals Yellow Tip, man it's just barely the smallest little hint of a scar and because it's going really well we are going to do a few things. Um, this is an Australian hobby frag called the Dallas Acro. As you can see he's decided to have a branch grow sideways and then downwards. So we're going to cut that at a 45, flip it around and try to get it to grow a little bit more in the direction that we want. Um, so that's going to be kind of easy right there. Uh, let's see what else we want to do. I'm going to go ahead and pull out a little bit here. So this is a nice little star mint candy cane right here. I'm not quite sure what's happening in this tank. I don't know if I have it just a little bit too bright for certain corals and just bright enough for the acros, but I'm gonna have to switch some stuff around. So we're gonna move him off to the side and then I'm gonna hack out most of this Thin Branch Manila Spy uh, Montipora. And on this other side here, we've got this really fast growing green bird's nest. This thing, again, just grew way out of proportion with the green poslipora behind it. I think it's one of those like super green polyped uh, varieties of Stylophora. So I'm just going to pull that whole thing off and put it somewhere else. But there's a beautiful strain of a very old classic strain of Ora green tint pink bird's nest that I want to get in that space because I don't really care if that one grows quite that large. So um, let's walk over to the uh, coral flats and show you some of the corals I'm going to work with. So as you can see, the uh, the acro flat is doing extremely well. I've been working hard to keep my nitrates from not being zero. Um, got awesome colors as you saw maybe in our calcium reactor video. Uh, definitely showed like the, the extremes of like a premium and a budget calcium reactor and we use both of them. They work really well. But here is that colony of the blue lightning stag aka Derek's indecision. Looking amazing. Um, really starting to encrust. But there's something really natural about how the base of the branch just kind of flows into the live part of the branch. And uh, uh, you know, to be fair, obviously it looked a little goofy for, I don't know, maybe two weeks uh, when the first uh, little signs of biofouling started accumulating. But now it just looks like an old piece of skeleton that's been in there forever and starting to encrust. So really looking forward to having like an extra half inch of encrustation on there and we'll really be able to get a feel for how that's going to develop. But let me show you some of the other corals that I'm going to be putting in the display tank today. So this is a different strain of green stylophora from what's in the tank. I believe what's in the tank is this like neon neon green variety. So we don't need like a forest green and a neon green, but I do want to add a little bit more pink. So this is kind of like the purple polyp yellow tip uh, Milka Stylo that we took out. Beautiful coral. I do wish it grew a little bit slower. Um, and then there's two different pink stylos. This one is a solid pink on pink on pink. And this one is a pink with maybe like more fuchsia tips and a little bit of a greenish interior. So we're going to clear some room out for those two guys. And then I'd like to put a couple staghorns in there. So this is the first documented coral ever grown, uh, Acropora ever grown in captivity. This is the uh, 
35 year old strain of Stuber's Acropora. Got that from ORA. And I'm still trying to remember who I got this from, but this is a really classic um, Acropora Abrolos ensis staghorn coral that gets really shaggy polyps, gets a big fat purple eraser tip. Um, uh, an uber classic that's become actually really hard to find. And I kind of rediscovered it in my collection. I don't remember who, got, who I got that from. And then lastly, this is that green tip pink uh, bird's nest that I'd like to replace the green bird's nest with. And uh, that should give us a little bit more growing room and a little bit something uh, funner and newer to look at. All right, so first thing I would like to do was kind of clean up this mess here. I know some people really love their corals growing into each other and stuff. I'm absolutely not one of those. I want to keep things clean, keep it open, keep it flowing. And uh, this is going to crumble into a million pieces, like guaranteed. There we go. And before you go ask me in the comments, this is uh, the Manila Spy Montipora. It's a really thin branching variety. All right, this is a different stylo, so we'll just re-glue him afterwards. That should make things a little easier. Try to get up in here, all right. There's no way I'm gonna get it all out, but this actually all grew out of like one original encrustation that I had <laughs> removed once and that just kept going and going and going. All right, there we go. It's a little easier with the fingers. Just to, there we go, so it like that, a bit like that, and just, there we go, that's, that's a good amount. All right, so we finished up some of the, the cleanup, some of the extra picking off. You know, like any other reef project, when you just start getting into it, you peel away a little bit and you find that there's a little bit more to do. So off camera, we cleaned up some sponge and some valonia and just kind of sucked it out at the same time we're picking it off. But now I want to remove this green bird's nest. I freaking love this coral. I remember when it was just like unobtainium. Once in a while, they'll get like a two-tone pattern where some branches are like a light green and their branches are dark green. Um, um, but one thing about bird's nest is it, I mean, except for like the tiniest little frag, it does not encrust. It simply just grows up and uses its extra branches to prop itself. So hopefully this should just lift off. Hopefully it should not be uh, 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 totally wrong. This thing has been here for a while. Let's see what I can do. I hope I don't have to chip it all away. I don't want to do that. Like, come on, come on. That's one big piece. So it hasn't encrusted, it's just that the branches have grown into the rock. Ooh, unfortunately, that's not gonna come off. All right, so like I said, uh, bird's nest doesn't encrust, but the branches can go sideways and hold on to other rocks. As I was trying to lift up the colony, like at the perimeter, it was just breaking those delicate outer branches. So what I'm gonna try to do is get the tweezers kind of underneath between the rock and like the core of the colony, where the branches are thicker and less brittle. Hopefully that's gonna allow me to lift up the whole thing without an explosion of green bird's nest. So wish me luck. I have a good view from here, but you can just frame it right there. This was just kind of tucked in here. Oh, oh yeah, so you see it's loose. Is it loose with the rock? Oh, the other rock is moving. Okay, we do not want an avalanche situation. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and move some rocks out of the way. Right on top of that coral, that's fine. <laughs> and then I think it's moving that, oh, that whole other rock. Maybe if I wiggle it. Oh yeah, there it goes. Boom. I knew that would work. I knew that would work. So it was a little bit holding on. Okay, come on, buddy. Ooh, yeah, dude, this was like, this was a small frag maybe like nine months ago. Take a look at this beauty. So definitely gonna put this guy to good use, just not in this tank. He's been crowding out the super green uh, Stylophora. So gonna clean up some of that Volonia that's grown inside of them, maybe reset some of these uh, colonies, and then uh, put some of that beautiful green tip pink bird's nest that I showed you earlier. We're gonna put that right here. You know, that was actually a lot easier than I thought. 
uh, taking out a few of the uh, wildfire corals and then cleaning up some of the sponge growth and valonia growth underneath it. But we stirred up the tank a little bit. Now we're just gonna do one of the easiest parts of this particular session. And that is basically uh, reprogramming this uh, Dallas Acro to uh, grow in a lot more flattering manner for this aquarium because I do not want my, my growth tips going straight downward. So this should be pretty easy. This will be one of the easiest things we've done. So yeah, so I just want to basically cut it at a 45, maybe like an inch away from this saddle between the branches and then just flip this guy around. I think that's gonna work. Do you think it's gonna work, Evan? Yeah, why not? <laughs> All right, let's see what we can do. Should be really easy and since it's fresh cut there's not much to be done don't want to get too much glue over there otherwise it's going to be a little scarred and then oh my this is exactly what i wanted dab 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 get a good bond between the two and look at that <laughs> looks like it's always been like that yeah that's look at that already boom instant fix got the coral growing how i want it i just yeah, <laughs> I've been wanting to do that for a long time. God, that looks like a like a mitered edge right there. Could barely even tell. Sweet. Nice. I gotta say, man, this is one of my favorite parts of working at the Reef Builder Studio. You know, a lot of people will set up uh, a main reef tank with some frag tanks so they can, you know, kind of shuffle their corals around. Well, these are basically my frag tanks. And I love coming over here with a tray with like a handful of corals in mind to grab. So we have the Stuber Acropora. I think this started growing in 1984. Uh, I think ORA is keeping the, uh, the strain alive. So we got that. We got the uh, Abrolos NC this looking staghorn right here. Nice shaggy staghorn. This deserves a, a little bit more attention and, and spotlight in the main tank. We're gonna go with two different flavors of, oh yeah, look at all that, look how green it is under there. That's gonna be a beautiful, beautiful core right there. That, there's that. And then I want the pinky pink, the solid pinky boy as well. I think I cleaned these up recently. And then finally, we're gonna grab this green tip pink bird's nest to replace the super fast growing green bird's nest um, that we just took out. I know some of you stick heads will feel me on this. Like sometimes you get things uh, as a wild card because you never know what they're gonna do. And this was an example of a, just a really classic pink uh, stylophora. I'm not sure exactly where he's gonna go yet. We're gonna audition him right here. And then this one looked looked just like a pink style of four when I got it, but I just saw some hints of green. And I'm like, you know what? We're gonna give it a try. And inside, it's just a really nice forest green where it's not getting uh, lit up directly and then pink on top where it's getting lit up directly. So that's gonna be a fun coral. So I went ahead and like cut off the bases of these corals. Cause as you saw with that green bird's nest coral, like the more clustered and tightly branched it is, the more it's gonna catch Valonia, which is gonna grow and then kind of choke out the coral in place. So I'm just gonna put a couple of these guys here, uh, just as you know, just as a visual like uh, check. They're not glued down at all, and then put away these other corals. Yeah, yeah that'll be pretty good. I think this guy we can go ahead and uh, audition him right here, real close to my desk, so I can keep a good eye on him. And then the other guy, he's gonna be. A, He's gonna have a special position because this is one of the oldest, well, the oldest documented Acropora in captivity. So I really want to use this orange cap. So again, this is not like the permanent placement, but basically I want it to live here on top of that cap. Yeah, I think that something like that'll work. And then go around the side. 
and see where this green tip pink bird's nest can go. I think he'll be able to go like right here-ish. Or maybe a little closer to that rock. So let me grab some glue and then we're gonna get these down permanently. Alrighty, now we're in the home stretch. I just need to glue down a few corals. This guy doesn't even have like, man, he doesn't even have <laughs> a, a, a clean base on here. So I think I'm just gonna wing it and just kind of hope that I can sort of just jam him right there and he won't fall down. Not, not my favorite, but I could probably live with that for a little while. Hopefully, again, he doesn't fall down into the Ghanis. That would be bad. And then this is the, uh, the funky Tonga style of fora that I, uh, I've had for a while. It's been waking up, knocked it off that rock. So we're gonna glue it back there amongst its family. There's not really like a surface right there to, to attach him to. There we go, there's a surface. I'm gonna get him jutting out. I'm gonna reapply since I figured out where he's gonna go. There we go, that should get him cantilevered a little bit facing the front. I think that should help. Hopefully, hopefully that'll cure by the time I, I turn the pumps back on. Come back around to here. We're going to glue this guy right next to the Milka. So when it grows out, it's gonna be a really nice field of stubby branches. I think we can probably put him down like this. And then finally, this is that really neat uh, wild card. I'm gonna have to just kind of manhandle him onto uh, what was a bunch of Montipore, but we do have a nice clean, flat edge right here. It's just kind of smother. All right, let's see if we can get some good contact right there and get it to hold in the mix. Check that from the other side because I think it's getting a little bit close here. Oh yeah, I don't like that at all. <laughs> oh, the glue came off the base. All right, let me try that again from this other side. Yeah, I think I got a better view here. Man, I, this fresh cut has actually got nothing to hold on to. So we're just gonna put you right there across those two rocks and hopefully that will last long. If you guys only knew how long I think about making these changes to the reef tank, giving careful consideration to which coral is gonna go where and next to what coral and how those colors are gonna work with each other and how the growth is gonna develop over time. Um, I think you'd definitely give this video a thumbs up because it takes a lot of really uh, thinking ahead to bring you along in the journey and also like de managing certain details like, oh, we're gonna pull this coral off. Oh, now there's a bunch of valonia and sponge that we wanna get uh, cleaned out from where all the herbivores and ermid crabs couldn't clean it up. But at the end of the day, it was really well worth it. So we checked up on three of our grafted corals um, and we made a brand new one with the uh, Dallas Acro, the Australian Hobby Frags, uh, planted two staghorn acros and two new Stylophora strains, which I finally get a really good look at now that they're in an aquarium setting, as well as that green tip pink bird's nest. If you have never grown a bird's nest, man, you really gotta do it, especially the sharp pink variety. Um, but if you want something really eye-catching, that green tip pink variety, which is not as sharp, is super fun, super fast growing, loves all the light you can throw at it, and it's just a uh, really, really fun coral. So this is, this the diversity of corals is really coming together in here. I wanna thank everyone for joining me on this adventure. There's been a lot of great feedback and comments um, as far as like the coral curation process, the Bob Rossing of happy little corals. I really am humbled by that comment. So if you enjoy this kind of video, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future installments of us working on some you know live coral aquascaping in a reef aquarium. And uh, we'll catch you guys on next video. Thanks for joining me. Later guys.